Today we are tackling something that might seem small, but can make a world of difference in the future. Naming your steps, adding descriptions and sprinkling in some comments in Power Query. Trust me, future you will thank you for this. When you make changes in Power Query, it automatically generate step names like changed type or filtered rows. Sure, these are fine at first, but after you've added 10, 15 or 50 steps, well, they are about as helpful as sticky notes in the wind. Default names don't really tell you much about what is happening. If you revisit the query a month later, you'll be scratching your head. This is where renaming steps can save you some future frustration. The golden rule – avoid spaces in step name. Why? Because spaces make Power Query grumpy. You'll need double quotes and hash symbols to reference those steps in code, which gets messy really fast. Instead, use continuous naming formats. There are two popular naming styles – camel case, where each word starts with a capital letter, or underscores. Both work fine. Just make sure to pick one and stick with it. Your future self will love the consistency. Here are a few quick tips to keep your step names clear and helpful. Be specific. Instead of filter the rows, try filter by year or filter by sales. This way you know exactly what is filtered. Use action words. Start your step names with verbs like remove, convert, filter or group. For example, remove null values or group by product. Keep it short. Step names shouldn't be a paragraph. Keep them clear, concise and to the point. Next, let's talk about descriptions. Renaming steps helps, but adding a description gives you an extra layer of clarity. To add a description, just right-click a step, select properties and type in what the step does. But how to write useful descriptions that will help you and future you understand your queries better? Focus on the why. Your descriptions should explain why you are doing something, not just what you are doing. Instead of filter the rules, say filter out rules where sales are below $100, to focus on high value orders. Be concise but clear. And don't overdo it. Not every step needs a description. Use them when the step is complex or when someone else or future you might not remember why that step was added. Descriptions make your query much easier to follow, especially when collaborating with others. Or future you who is wondering what was I thinking here. Use descriptions when you want a brief explanation that is visible while browsing through the steps. Comments, on the other hand, live inside the formula bar and are more detailed. You can add a comment by typing two slashes, followed by your notes, right inside the code. Comments are better for more complex explanation, like why you are using a certain function or what a tricky formula does. They are hidden in the background, unless someone is specifically looking at the code. If you need more room to explain your logic, you can add multi-line comments. Start with slash asterisk and end with asterisk slash. Everything between these markers is considered a comment, like this. And keep in mind, all the comments that are written after the step will be visible only inside the Power Query Edit. If you want it to stay visible always, type it inside the formula. If you found this helpful, hit like and subscribe for more Power Query tips. And if you want to know how I manage working with multiple queries at the same time, check out our other video on managing multiple Power Query windows. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.